Hello and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. Tonight is episode 307 and today is Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. A little discombobulated here, my uh, behind the scenes camera is not working today. So you saw an upside down workspace during the countdown. <laughs> story of my life. If you're watching us live as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And hello to those of you watching us on replay. We appreciate you coming back to watch the replay. I've got some fun projects for you tonight. I'm not as organized as I usually am. However, the project sheets are already linked in the description, but I don't remember the names of things. I do remember measurements and such, but we're going to be doing a, a window, a window punch note card. This was something for, um, we got uh, during on stage at home, which is a demonstrators only virtual event we had this past weekend. They shared a card like this and I was just enamored by how it worked and how simple it was. So I wanna show you how easy this is, especially for making Christmas cards this year if you want something quick and easy. And so many of you have asked me to create a box for the Lindor truffle bars or lint truffle bars, depending on which bar. I got one of each when I went to Target today. So I did find them. It's these ones, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. Um, the one that's in the package is the red package, but they're all the same size. So that's what we're gonna be making tonight. Let's see what's coming up next here. <laughs> If you do have a question for me tonight, be sure to put a Q in front of that question. Otherwise, it's just a comment. My husband, Brian, is watching for your questions. I'll try to grab them if you're new here and you forget the Q, but uh, the audience, my audience will help you out as well. If you are new here, let us know in the chat. My audience will welcome you. They're so amazing. And let's see, what do we have? <laughs> um, when you shop with me, you earn pixie perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do is to use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto magically make sure you're shopping with me and add my current host code. If your order is $150 or more, you want to remove that host code because you're going to earn stamp and rewards, but you'll still earn pixie perks from me. Let's see. Oh, this is a sneak peek of the project. Oh, what am I doing? That's the online store. I don't even know what's coming up next on my scenes. Um, you saw really briefly the seasonal sale. And actually, let me bring up that. Let's do this and this and pause. Okay, so we currently have the seasonal sale, which is going on until tomorrow. It was November 14th through the 16th. Just a quick reminder, these are only analytic annual catalog products um, that are on sale, but it is, let's see, 10% off ribbons and trims, 15% off inks, which includes ink pads, ink refills, Versamark stays on, Stampin' Blends, which is an amazing deal at 15% off, and then 20% off papers, which also included in that category are like treat packaging. There's little gift bags, gift card holders, um, like the gift card box, I think it's called, or not the gift card box. It's an envelope box, uh, note cards and envelopes, envelopes, masking paper. There was a bunch of things in that category that I didn't even realize were actually going to be discounted. So that ends tomorrow at midnight mountain time. There is a link in the description to the seasonal sale if you wanna go check that out. It is a great time to add additional colors to your stash or a great time to stock up on staples like basic white cardstock and envelopes and that type of thing. The note cards and envelopes that we're using in tonight's uh, card, those are also discounted as well. So there's that. And my next members only stream for those who are channel members is tomorrow night, November 16th, 2023 at 8 p.m. That is episode two specifically for my channel members. So if you'd like to join the channel and partake in tomorrow's members only live stream, you can do that underneath the video. There should be a button that says join. I'll also make sure after the live stream to add a link in the description for those of you that are on iOS devices. Um, sometimes that join button is either there or it's not depending on whether you're using the app or not. So 
This is just a list, list of the perks that are available when you join my membership. It's $4.99 per month. That's a recurring charge. If you don't want to do the recurring charge, you can always do super chats and super thanks and things like that to support the channel. We appreciate all of you. All right, let's see. Now we can jump into tonight's projects, but I do have a little bit of show and tell for you. Not from the kids, but some happy mail that I've received in the mail. So, well, happy mail, and then let me show you the two cards that we made during our On Stage at Home event. This is using the Be Mine Sweet Collection, and I absolutely love this bundle. Well, the whole suite, to be honest, but it's beautiful paper, perfect for Valentine's Day. The uh, B Builder Punch has pieces and parts that look like hearts, like for the wings and the antenna, so it's sort of a multi-use uh, sweet or punch, I should say, but I thought that was a super fun card. We made both of these during the on stage at home event and saw lots of inspiration. I've seen the new mini catalog and the new celebration brochure. All I'm going to say is brace yourselves because it is wonderful as usual. So I can't wait to do sneak peeks for you. Shout out to my team member, Linda, for this amazing fun fold card. I love these cards. I haven't actually given one of these a try myself, but I thought that was beautiful for the fall. So Linda, thank you for the Thanksgiving card. I got a wonderful congratulations card from my team member, Jan, Jan, or Jan and Linda, if you're watching, thank you so much. I love this, the translucent florals, makes really beautiful cards and she's using the deckled rectangles dies there. And then I kind of had to double check this, I even had Brian look at it, but this is a card from Sarah Douglas congratulating me on a recent sales milestone. I just reached my 700,000 in sales over the last couple of months and she sent me a really wonderful congratulations card. So I thought that was so sweet. I'm gonna treasure that card for sure. So thank you, Sarah. All right, tonight's projects. We're gonna do the note card first. Both of these projects are actually very easy. I know last week the um, double-lidded, what, what was that called? The double, I don't even remember. <laughs> the double-lid gift box that I did last week. I know that one took a little bit longer. I'm taking it easy on you this week. Um, and then a quick note, and I'll remind you towards the end, Brian and I are gonna take next week off from streaming because it's the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, the kids are home for the week, so there'll be no live stream next week. I will be back live the week after next, and I'm not sure what the date is. Sometime in December. No, not quite December. It'll be November 29th will be the next live stream, episode 308. All right, I'm going to put that off to the side. So this is using our note cards and envelopes. You can get a pack of them. It's 20 note cards and 20 envelopes. The size of our note cards and envelopes are five and a half by three and a half. So if you don't have the note cards and envelopes, you can create the size easily by using a five and a half by seven piece of cardstock. And then you're just gonna go ahead and score that in the center at three and a half along the seven inch side. All right, so look at how cool this window is. And that's using that new hexagon punch that is an early release from the upcoming mini catalog, but it is available in the online store today. So I love doing that. It's just basically a punch out and then you punch the designer series paper. And I just had so much fun creating this. So um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into that. I don't have anything cut or prepped. We're going to do it all on the fly tonight. Okay. <laughs> Now I do typically have a stash of note cards and envelopes. Again, you get 20 of each. They're already cut and scored for you. So you just need to fold them in half and burnish. So that is the basics of the note card. And of course, when you get the note cards and envelopes, um, the envelopes are the perfect size. All right, they look just like our medium envelopes. They're just sized to fit a three and a half by five and a half card. So the basics of this window punch card is we're just gonna come in with, this is the hexagon, hexagon punch. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's called. Um, but again, I'm kind of all over the place today. So this is, I've got my fold here on the left and I'm basically pushing my punch all the way down till it stops. So I think you can see right there, the cardstock's gonna stop right there. And then I'm just centering, I have this um, in landscape, but I'm centering um, 
top to bottom. So there's the same amount of cardstock on this side of the punch and this side of the punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and punch. You can save this piece for something else. We're not gonna use it on tonight's card. So that creates that little window, okay? Now, I've got a scrap piece of the, uh, hold on, Joyful. Joy of Christmas designer series paper. That's the one we're using tonight. I love this. This is my favorite uh, Christmas paper in the whole current mini catalog. It's beautiful. Uh, we've got Cherry Cobbler, Old Olive, Pebbled Path, Pecan Pie, Real Red, and Shaded Spruce. And I just happen to have a scrap piece. I'm gonna tell you, you can get four of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12, and you're gonna end up with a piece that's three and a half by three and a half. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that for the punch. Okay, so this piece then is just gonna fit right on the inside. So this is, I'm gonna put this in first because this is the basics of this window punch style card. So I'm gonna just put liquid glue on the back of this. And obviously if you've got a directional paper, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to that when you punch it out. So I'm gonna just kind of lay it in this little window here and then I'm gonna open it and press. Make sure that's all lined up. Oh, I love that pattern of that paper, okay? So that's the basics. And then we're gonna cut a piece of real red that measures seven eighths tall by three and a half inches wide. Real red seems to be my jam. Between that and Poppy Parade this year are the ones that I'm using the most. So seven eighths by three and a half. All right, so I'm, we're gonna do a little bit of stamping. I'm gonna put this piece to the side for now, but essentially that's gonna lay over our little window punch here, okay? Um, let's see. I'm gonna bring in shaded spruce and let's do that stamping first. Probably gonna have to get into that cabinet somehow for my <laughs> stamp and cut and emboss machine, yep. Um, let's see, shaded spruce. Oh yeah, that probably needs to roll all the way. <laughs> I am uh, resituating things in my craft room, so stuff is kind of all over the place. All right, I'm gonna bring in the stamp and pierce mat, and I'm actually gonna do a little bit of stamping here. Now there's no fancy way to do this, but I wanted to stamp it after I punched it, only because this stamp from The Joy of Noel stamp set is a rather large one, so I didn't want to stamp first and then punch just because technically that stamp's gonna fit on either side. Now I did a couple samples ahead of time where I had the sprigs kind of above and below this hexagon and it was way too busy with the paper. So I only want to add the sort of um, holly sprigs down towards the lower right. So to do that, I'm actually, I've got some scrap basic white. I happen to have that laying around. I'm gonna put one on the inside of the card just to protect that designer series paper. And then I'm gonna put one, technically I'm gonna turn this upside down because it's just easier for me to picture. But I'm taking another piece of basic white and basically just laying that edge at the halfway point of this little hexagon. Hopefully that makes sense. You can use post-it notes for this, copy paper, um, whatever you want to use. And then I'm just gonna ink up in shaded spruce. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a sprig there. 
So I just am strategically placing these sort of scrap pieces of paper so that I can get that little stamp down there in the lower right. Now, if you like an even more clean and simple card, you don't have to do this stamping step. I would think maybe a rhinestone or three would look really beautiful down there, but I just thought it needed a little bit of extra something. I'm not afraid of white space, but I liked that little bit of stamping there on the front of the card, okay? While we have this out, and I might as well just use the scrap paper that I've got, I'm gonna stamp the sentiment to you and yours, and that one comes from Christmas Classics. These two are in the mega suite in the catalog. I'm trying to figure out if I have that. I don't know where that catalog is. <laughs> so we're gonna just go ahead and stamp the sentiment. And then I'm gonna die cut it. I'm gonna show you where I pulled the die cut from. Now, if you don't have these dies, these are from the Cracker and Treat Box dies. And I loved this little rectangle piece. Obviously, you can fussy cut this sentiment, no problem. I do love to use a die cut just because I feel like it gives it much nicer edges. Oh, I'm sure all my plates are in there too. <laughs> All right, I'm trying a new tape here. It's called Pixie Tape, so I will recommend it once I've given it a chance here, but it's just um, removable tape, just like our post-it tape as well, but I love the fact that it's called Pixie Tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and die cut that and come back and do the heat embossing in a second. All right, hold on while I go grab my cutting plates. So we're using plate one and two, and then two plate threes. I like to put it at a little bit of an angle to die cut it. And we'll bring this back in a moment when we do the second project. All right. So that just gives it a really clean cut, but you can absolutely fussy cut it as well. So I had originally stamped directly on the designer series paper, but it was such a busy paper that you couldn't see the sentiment at all. So I'm just gonna use liquid glue and we'll glue that down. Looking for my reverse tweezers here, just to kind of help me hold this and position it. All right. I'm eyeballing it to center it left to right, top to bottom. That looks pretty good there. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Anna. <laughs> I just have to say hi. <laughs> All right, so there we go. And then we've got this piece that we're gonna heat emboss. Now, I'm gonna, we're gonna do all the heat embossing at once. I'm gonna do the same sentiment for the Lindor truffle bar box as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss both and we'll come back and die cut the second piece for that. So, I've got a scrap piece of basic white and then this piece again, that was the seven eighths by three and a half. And I'm trying out this little brush from my Sweet Petunia, but it's the same kind of thing as our embossing buddy. It's got that powder in there that'll help get the oils and reduce the static. And we're gonna bring in Versamark. We're using the same sentiment for both, making spirits bright. I think I have my heat tool plugged in. 
got my white embossing powder that comes from the basics. So we should be able to do both of these at the same time. Now, this sentiment is a bit of a long one. So I like to take the ink to the clear block. It just makes it a little bit, gives you a little bit more control when you're inking that up. I typically do that when the stamp set is larger than the ink pad itself. So I wanna center this one because we're not die cutting this one. Now you absolutely could die cut both of these and then just trim the ends if you wanted to use the same die cut piece. So we got that one. And I should have a little bit of time with the Versamark. It's still stay sticky for a little bit. I should be able to do both of these at once. Here we go, okay. You can just barely see the sentiment. It gives that kind of watermark effect. All right, so let's do this guy. Got my little silica pack in there to try to keep the moisture out here in Atlanta. Get my powder to last a little bit longer. All right, I'm gonna flick, flick that off, off screen. <laughs> there we go, that looks good. And then we got our other one. Try not to make a huge mess here, but maximizing our time with the heat tool. <laughs> Sound effects here with the uh, flicking off the powder. So that one's ready as well. All right. Get the powder out of here before I make a mess. Got my little paddle board again. I got it from Etsy, it's no longer available, but just use a clothespin or tweezers or um, anything like that. I think I can put both of these on here at the same time. There we go. Oops, as I just put that right over the M. It's all right, we're going with it. All right, heat tool here. I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. There we go, starting to change. Brian's missing the magic. We're gonna put this one off to the side. We'll save that to die cut for the other piece or other project, I should say. All right, so now what we're gonna do is to take this and adhere it right over our little window punch out here, okay? So I'm gonna use liquid glue and you just wanna kinda of pay attention. This width here is about all the adhesive that we wanna place down on the back side of the real red piece, so. Just gonna come, I don't know, it's about a half of an inch, maybe not quite. So just on either end like so. And then I like to sort of center starting on the left and then lay it down on the right. Now the liquid glue again is gonna give us a chance to slide things around and get it right where we want it. And I'm making sure to press flat here. I don't know if you can tell on my sample, but it's got a little bit of a curve to it. Um, I don't think I pressed it flat <laughs> while I was putting it down. Like so, okay? So what's great about that center bar is it hides that inside sentiment, which I think is so adorable. Now we need a little bit of bling for this guy. If I can find my rhinestones. <laughs> of course not, Julie. Let's see, I know they're here. Hiding. So 
So I'm going to just put rhinestones right on those three holly berries that we see. And there we have really a quick and easy card that packs a punch. It's got that really cool window there, and I love the way that that looks. So um, loved getting this idea from on stage at home. It's one of the many things I love about our Stampin' Up! events for demonstrators just full of inspiration. So I hope you'll give this a try. Now, this can work with so many different punches. I was thinking about the modern oval punch. Um, let's see. This one would be a cute one, the Lasting Label Punch. Even the Decorative Circle Punch. So you can have a lot of fun. And same thing is you would basically just slide the punch in and go all the way down. That just helps you get it in the same spot each time. All right, so that is project number one. Let's move into project number two to coordinate with it. Again, here's what we're doing, the Lindor Truffle Bar. And I'm gonna cut a piece of the Joy of Christmas to three and a half by eight and a half. Now, you can decide whether you want your pattern to go up and down this direction or up and down this direction. This pattern in particular is non-directional, so it really doesn't matter which way we cut it. Uh, you can get four pieces out of a sheet of 12 by 12. So you're gonna have one piece that goes uh, perpendicular to the other three pieces in order for that layout to work. And actually, you know what? Let me show you on a full piece of DSP to show you how it, it's cut. I don't have my phone plugged in to show you that die cut app. So let me grab I think I might have, let's see. I love this paper so much. I don't have, well, we'll cut it with the green one, but I'm gonna come back and use the one with the holly berries. So just to show you what you would do here, um, and again, this is non-directional. This really only works with non-directional if you wanna get the full four pieces. Otherwise, if it is, well, it depends. You might be okay with one of your treat boxes turned a little bit the opposite direction. Man, my words are hard tonight, but hopefully that makes sense. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut a strip to three and a half. Okay, so that's one, and essentially I would cut another three and a half off of it. So this is gonna be your little three and a half by three and a half inch square that you're gonna have left over from a piece of 12 by 12. So I'll lay this out on the screen in a minute so you can see what it looks like. And then we're gonna cut now with this piece um, horizontal, three, three and a half inch pieces. and you'll still have another piece left over. So while we're here, I'm just gonna quickly cut for the project we're gonna do tonight, and then I'll lay out the pieces for you. I'm gonna put the arm out, because I'm not sure if that's 12. Is that 12? It is, okay. <laughs> I try to refrain from putting the arm out because it takes so much space, but it's there if you need it. All right. So again, on the 12 by 12, one, two, three. I'm gonna space these out so you can see it. Making sure I'm not totally off camera. I'm probably not putting the pattern exactly right, but, so we did that first three and a half inch piece and then cut three and a half off of it. So that's one piece, three and a half by eight and a half. Then we did three more. So you get four. And then these are the two pieces that you would have left over from a full 12 by 12 that you can use for another project, okay? So I got these ready to go for more Lindor truffle bars. 
All right, so again, eight and a half by three and a half, okay? I, for, I left my uh, template on the printer. Do you mind going to get that? <laughs> I was so focused on the uh, project sheets. All right, so bringing in the Simply Scored. Along the three and a half inch side, thank you. You're gonna go ahead and score at one inch, one and a half, two and a half, and three. And then I'm gonna turn it clockwise and score it at half of an inch. Now, if that half of an inch is kind of hard for you to get in there, after you do these score lines, again, one, one and a half, two and a half, and three, you could turn it counterclockwise and score it at eight, if that makes it easier for you to get that score line. So either way, you can turn it clockwise and score it half of an inch, or turn it counterclockwise and score it at eight, if that's easier for you, okay? But really easy scoring and it's gonna be really easy cutting as well. I'll bring the template back out, I'll bring the template out in just a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. So here is the template. I did add the hole punches for you there for reference. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up each of the vertical score lines along the bottom. I actually am gonna cut from the back side because that front side pattern is pretty busy. Easier to see my score lines on the back. So cut up each of the vertical score lines. I've done that, those are all kind of separated now. And then I'm gonna remove this lower corner and also come in and miter cut just slightly. So you'll see it's just the tiniest little bit of an angle there. Easier to see maybe on the other side. I'm also gonna come in and miter cut on these square tabs. So these are half inch square. on the floor and then I'm just gonna do a tiny little miter cut here at the top edge all right so that is done that looks like our template here really simple kind of basics here you'll see that template referenced in the project sheet that's linked in the description so now what I'm gonna do is uh, with that little half inch section along the right side, I'm gonna run a strip of tear and tape right up to the score line. You can use liquid glue for this as well. So again, I just put that right up to the score line there. Okay. Bubba G in the house tonight? No Bubba G. Um, I'm going to pull off the backing and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to fold on the second score line from the left and the first score line from the right. Okay. So second score line from the left, first from the right, and then I'm just going to press that flat like so. All right, so we've got our, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> we have our seam along the back here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, as I put this together, paying attention to the seam, I'm gonna fold in the two tabs, grab my liquid glue. Tried to open that one-handed, that didn't work tonight. So a little bit of liquid glue on each tab. And then liquid glue on the front flap the flap opposite, whoops, the flap opposite the uh, 
seam, okay? So I'll fold the back flap, then the front flap, and then we're gonna go ahead and squeeze and square up the bottom. I love liquid glue for that because I can get it right into place, okay? So then I'm gonna go ahead and grab that chocolate. Did you eat it already? The one you're saving? I'm joking. <laughs> you're like, were you saving that? So I like to use that. I'm basically folding this wrapper just out of the way. It makes it a little bit easier to slide it in. And then I can push that all the way down and that also is putting pressure on just the tabs on the bottom, just like we do with most of our boxes here, okay? So it does come out pretty easily. I just shake it out, but it is quite a snug fit. Um, I did that purposefully. Uh, it's a little bit wider than it needs to be, but that's because this wrapper is a little bit unwieldy the way that it's put together. And go ahead and put that in there again, okay? So you've got a little bit of space on the top. I know you can't see that even with the lights, but all I'm gonna do is using my index fingers, just push on either side and pinch, push and pinch. And then you kind of get that little bit of a milk carton type top there. And you got some space here to punch some holes, okay? So the Lindor truffle bar comes to about, right about here, but then naturally there's a little bit of space for that to kind of pinch in, okay? And it's just such a cute, quick and easy way to dress up these, bar these bars. And I'm gonna show you a trick from my mom, Pixie. So um, during the holidays, she would always save uh, Christmas cards from the year before, and she'd cut them up into little pieces to create these little mini note cards. And every single one of those note cards had a number of different layers on it, and they were all held together using a little ribbon like this. So many of you have probably done this over the years. There's no tying of a knot, but it kind of is a little bit of a faux knot, but all you need to do is punch two holes. So you could do this on your card fronts, um, boxes, all types of things. All you need to do is just punch two holes and then you can weave your ribbon through it and it's gonna hold that together. So I did little bird's beak um, ends here on the ribbon. I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll die cut our heat embossed sentiment as well. So I'm gonna bring in my circle punch or I should say, <laughs> hole punch. It's just an eighth of an inch hole punch. Again, this one's specifically stamping up, but it's retired. I'm going to come in and punch two holes. I'm coming down about a half of an inch and uh, in about a quarter of an inch from the side. And you just want those punches to be as in line with each other as you can get them. They don't have to be perfect. The ribbon's going to be really forgiving, but I just added just those two holes there. And the width of the hole punches is basically gonna be the width of your knot. I'm doing air quotes there because it's not really a knot, okay? All right, so we're using the basic black and very vanilla large check ribbon. And I'm just gonna cut about a six inch piece of ribbon to play with. We are gonna trim off some of the ends, but six seems to be a good size to work with. I do like to angle cut the ribbon as well, or the ends, I should say. Get my ribbon out of here. All right, so essentially, I'm gonna feed the ribbon through the front on both sides. So both ends through their respective holes through the front, okay? like that. And I just kind of equally pull the ends back. Again, this is the front. Is it the front? Yeah, this is the front. And I've got the ribbons pulled to the back. Now I've turned it to the back. And while I'm pulling the ribbon that's on the left, I'm pulling it over to the right to sort of reveal the hole there. And I'm gonna take the right ribbon and cross it over to the left hole. And if you have a little bit of trouble here, you could use the ball tip of the stylus from the Simply Scored or the Take Your Pick tool, which I'm actually going to do just that because it's fighting with me. So I've got my Take Your Pick tool. I'm gonna to put the little ball tip in. Again, pulling the left one to the right, and then I'm just gonna put that like over the hole and then just press it through. There we go. 
sometimes you need a little help from our tool friends, right? I don't know what I would do without my tools. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the opposite side. I'm gonna push that through to the front again. I'm just gonna use my stylus. Push that in through. There we go. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, let me just explain that again. We took a six inch piece of ribbon, which as you can see, was a little bit long. You could probably go down to about five inches or so, but you wanna have a little bit of length to work with. So I fed the two ends through the front to the back. Then I crisscrossed them and fed them back through the back to the front, just on opposite sides. And then you can kind of just judge the ribbon here on the front, but you'll see you've got that little knot and then you've got two tails, okay? Now, to create the little bird's beak, you're actually gonna fold the ribbon in half. Now I'm folding it backwards, like so, folding it in half, and then I'm gonna cut from the fold up to the edge of the ribbon. And what that does, gives you that little flag end or bird's beak. So same thing, and this time I'm going to cut it to get the right angle, depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Again, you're folding the ribbon in half and then cutting from the fold up to the edge to get that little bird's beak. And then you can still zhuzh. Be careful when you zhuzh a little bit at this point so you, your ribbon doesn't fray, but then you've got those cute little bird's beak ends, okay? Super fun. All right, so that's a little little thing from, as the kids refer to her, Grandma Pixie. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and die cut this piece. And this one comes from the Christmas Classics dies. Which are these beauties. That had to, I've had to put them on two magnet cards, but it's this one. And I love the fact that it's got kind of those slanted edges on it. Perfect fit for the front of this box. Now I just need to find my heat embossed piece. Here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and die cut that sentiment. Get my pixie tape. Getting that centered. There we go. And let me bring in the stamp and cut emboss machine. Again, a little bit cattywampus on the plate so that it doesn't have speed bumps on the way through. Thanks for the tip, Sharon. That's great. Floss loops. All right, so this guy, we're gonna go ahead and use liquid glue. And we'll place that right on the front. And the uh, Lindor truffle bar is a pretty snug fit height-wise, uh, or depth-wise, I should say. So I'm basically using that to be able to put pressure on that sentiment piece. I found my rhinestones. <laughs> then we'll grab a rhinestone and pop that on with just a little bit of bling. And there we've got a quick and easy Lindor truffle bar box. So that's the sample. That's the one we made tonight. Let me bring in the cards we made. Quick and easy. Again, I love the way that that window punch or punch window works. 
So those are tonight's projects. Again, the project sheets are linked down in the description. So I'm gonna go ahead and tee up the questions for tonight. As a reminder, if you've joined us late, if you've got questions for me, put a Q in front of that question that will make it into my Q. Again, just a reminder, there is a little bit of a delay, so I may miss questions that come through at the very end, and that's just a timing issue. All right, let's come on to this screen and let's see who's up first. Ramona's got question number one. How was Brian's birthday? Anything fun? We went to, uh, what was the name of the restaurant? It was like a beer garden. I can't think of the name of it, but we had really good burgers. Um, Lily tried fried Brussels sprouts for the first time and she didn't hate them. They were really, really good, but we did that. And then we, Brian didn't have ice cream. You, ha you picked out a good beer instead, but we went to Jenny's for ice cream. I'm trying to think, Lily got white chocolate peppermint. Nolan got milkiest chocolate for those of you that are Jenny's fans. And I got the <laughs> gooey butter cake, which was really good. I don't know. Has anybody had the butter cake from California Pizza Kitchen? It's really good. Anyways, it was wonderful. We had a good time. We got a good family picture. The kids and Brian were groaning when I was trying to take an ussy, not a selfie, an ussy. <laughs> but they actually were all smiles on the first take. So I was pretty happy with that, but thank you for asking. The date when the dragonfly and it's the, what are the dragonfly and birds embellishments, those are estimated the last I checked today. I think it was this morning I checked um, next week, the week of November 20th is when they should be restocked or they're estimated to be restocked. Let's see, do you let the blender markers dry before coloring in a new color? I've seen videos where some say let it dry and others don't. Love and appreciate all your tutorials. Thank you, Lorraine. I typically do not let my blender pens dry um, if I am blending two colors together. So there, you've probably heard both ways because some folks, when they're ready to move on to a new color that might be sort of butting up next to the other color or the first color they colored, they may let those two, two dry so that they don't really blend together, but you get the best blending experience if you're trying to blend colors when that alcohol is still a little bit damp. Now, again, the alcohol dries really quickly but um, the sort of the faster you move, the better the blending will be. And so I recommend that you kind of stick to small areas at a time, and then you'll get some really beautiful blending that way. It is pretty fail-proof. Um, I am not a coloring artist by any means, nor do I know the techniques, but the blender, the Stampin' Blends are really an incredible, um, if, you, if you love alcohol markers, I do love our Stampin' Blends, so great question. Is Night Divine in stock? Let me see if I can pull up. Let me log in really quickly. Somebody said it was. Yeah. I'm going to check on the dragonflies too. Oh, actually, it looks like the dragonflies are back in stock because I don't see, there's no embellishments out of stock at the moment. So it looks like the dragonflies, I think it's dragonflies and birds, those are back in stock. So, um, Night Divine, let's see. I believe it is in stock. I don't see it anywhere on the inventory status list, Ramona. So that means that's a good sign. We don't want it to be on the inventory status report because <laughs> that means it's either um, low inventory or currently out of stock, but I don't see it on there. So it should be available. Yes, Donna, my understanding is the paper is the same. It comes from the same paper mill. So uh, it is the, um, I believe it's the same weight as the basic white thick for the note cards and envelopes. So I love them. Um, I always try to make sure I have them in my stash. They're great for quick and easy cards because you've already got the envelope to go with it and they're already cut and scored for you. So it makes it really easy to crank out some cards. So the slight angle while die cutting, Raquel, that is just so that when the rollers, because there's, there's rollers on the top and the bottom, so on the top and the bottom of the plates that go through the machine, 
When you put in something that's like, <laughs> bless you, square or rectangular, if you're putting all of that flat edge, sort of that pressure into the rollers at the same time, I call it the speed bump effect. You kind of hear the, the machine going bump, bump, bump. <laughs> That's a technical term there. Um, but if you put it at an angle, then that just means the angle, or I should say the edges, are going through the rollers at an angle, and it just has a much smoother pass through the machine. So that's always my tip for stuff that's rectangular or square and ha or has a long edge to put that in at a little bit of an angle when it goes through the machine. It just um, evens out the pressure with the roller blades. The roller blades? The, ro the rollers. <laughs> They're not blades. <laughs> uh, let's see. I see your plates are quite used. Do you get lines in your cardstock as a result? How do you avoid that? I typically don't get lines on the cardstock. Sometimes with our foil paper, I do. That's just because the foil uh, layer on the top is really sensitive to texture. A couple of things you can do to reduce that is just grab some junk mail or some copy paper and kind of put that between um, your cardstock. So cardstock, die, copy paper, or junk mail, plate. So that just um, puts a little barrier between your cardstock and the um, scratchy plate. The name of the brush, it's the Rabbit Hole Designs um, on My Sweet Petunia. So that's what it looks like. Where do I keep my tools like the ruler? Let me see if I can lift this up here. I've got this one linked on my favorites page. Oh, surprise things hiding behind it. But this is what it looks like. I don't want to turn it too far forward, but there is six different cubbies. And I just kind of throw um, all my different tools in there. I actually, right here, I created little mini boxes <laughs> to hold my... Um, accessories for the take your pick tool and my adhesive eraser and the um, sand eraser but yeah I've got all my all my tools and things are sitting there it just sits right next to my work area but that is linked on my favorites page let's see will I ever do a tour of my craft room I would love to but it's always in such a state of disarray that um, I'm not quite ready to do it. I know I've not been ready for several years, but um, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yes, I knew I was going to get this question this week. <laughs> I was like, how soon will I get a question about product shares? Yes, I will be doing product shares. I am in the midst of working out the details of it. Um, but yes, you can expect paper pixie product shares for me. So if you've participated in my product shares in the past, you're already on my email list, you'll get first notification when that sign up is open and ready for sign up. Um, and if you would like to be on my notification list, just the paperpixie.com slash shares and you can jump on my email list for that to be first notified. The measurements for the die on the lint box, yes. It is three and five eighths wide by seven eighths inch tall. So um, this also, if you have this die, this will also work for the um, window punch card that we created. You just need to trim off the ends to get it down to uh, three and a half inches wide. The heat tool, Cindy, is the one from Stampin' Up. It's the Stampin' Up heat tool. Uh, I can't remember the price. I wanna say like it's around $30. I'm not sure if that one had a price increase, but that you can find that in the online store at stampinup.com. With all the stamp sets you have, how do you keep track of where a particular sentiment it is you want to use? So I have my inventory in um, Airtable and I've got a whole blog post and video about that. Airtable's recently changed their pricing structure so it might not be a fit for everybody. Um, it depends on how many records you want or how much you have in your crafty inventory, whether or not Airtable makes sense. Um, I use Airtable for a whole bunch of things, but that is my choice for my Stampin' Up! inventory in there. I store 
uh, punches, dies, stamp sets, bundles. And I do typically type the sentiments, although full disclosure, I don't always search on those very often. I typically, because I spend so much time with Stampin' Up's products, I usually remember what sentiments become are part of which stamp set. Now, if you were to ask me on the fly what stamp set has that sentiment, that would be hard for me to come up with. But I've got my stamp sort of in a display, displayed in a way that I can quickly scan and look for sentiments, but I do use Airtable for the inventory. Will you show the birthday ussy on the next members group? I will, Cindy. I'll show that tomorrow night to you. <laughs> what are all the measurements on the Simply Scored? Um, Tammy, I'm not sure um, if you're asking specifically about the project or the Simply Scored itself, so I'm going to answer both just in case. So for the um, Simply Scored measurements for the box, it was one, one and a half, two and a half, and three along the three and a half inch side, and then on the eight and a half inch side, just a half of an inch, okay? But the Simply Scored itself, it's eighth of an inch measurements all down the board. I want to say it goes up to 12 and a half. 12 and 3 eighths is the furthest measurement you can go out, but it is every eighth of an inch. The vertical grooves are every eighth of an inch, okay? And then along the side, so top to bottom, it goes down to 12 and a quarter with the measurements along the side. So these measurements, 12 and a quarter. That is why I try to come up with scoring measurements that are only on the eighths versus sixteenths, because sixteenths you need to use the stamp and trimmer. <laughs> All right. I'm not, I don't understand your question, Patricia. Oh, I see that. And I don't understand that question. What was your rating for overall? Oh, I think I do understand, hold on. <laughs> okay, what does the sand eraser do and what is it used for? So um, it's the Tombow sand eraser and it is really used for erasing ink. So if you've got an ink, oops, and if you act pretty quickly before that ink really seeps into your cardstock, you can usually sand erase it away. Now what it'll do is it breaks down the paper fibers just a little bit to try to release the ink from the paper. So uh, I think it comes in a two pack. I've got it listed on my favorites page, but again, it's the, the Tombow sand eraser. And I use that whenever I've got a little ink oops. I also use it sort of the same way I use the adhesive eraser. Now this one is cut in half. It used to be a square, but I cut it in half so I'd have double the edges. Not quite double, but extra edges. Um, both of these will work to get adhesive off of your cardstock as well. The, the uh, adhesive eraser is a little bit better at pulling adhesive off, but the sand eraser works too. So, all right. So Patricia, my, I was uh, number 10 overall for the U S for um, overall. And then for sales leadership and team building, I was number 12 for all three of those. So um, I'm very grateful and blessed and honored uh, to be ranked number 10, um, sort of still pinching myself, but thank you to all of you for your support. So, all right, so that was the end of the questions. Thank you guys so much for your questions tonight. If you learned a great tip or trick or two, or you enjoyed tonight's projects, be sure to hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, hit subscribe so you'll be notified when we're live next. The next time we will be live for episode 308 will be Wednesday, November 29th. So we will not be live next week. We're gonna take next week off for Thanksgiving and enjoy time with family. The kids are home from school next week. Uh, so we will see you again Wednesday, November 29th, 2023 for episode 308. The seasonal sale again tomorrow is the last day, November 16th, 2023. Uh, you can get 10% off ribbons and trims from the annual catalog, 15% off 
inks and other ink products from the annual catalog or 20% off paper, designer series paper, paper products from the annual catalog as well. So take a look at that. It's a great time to stock up on your staples in your stash or maybe add some new colors to your collection or start or, or build your investment of Stampin' Blends, it's a great time to get those at a discount. You'll find links in the description for the project sheets for tonight's projects, as well as the link to the seasonal sale. And again, tomorrow night is my members only live stream for channel members only. That will be at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's episode number two. Again, you can join the channel. You should see a join button just below this video next to the subscribe button. If you don't see it, make sure you're using a browser versus the YouTube app on an iOS device. And I'll also update the description, the description with a link to the channel membership after tonight's live stream. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving, that you find some time to relax, spend some time with family and friends, or spend some time doing things that you love. Carve out some time to be crafty, and don't forget all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. We will see you on November 29th for episode 308. Take good care. Bye.